Hey, this is Bill for Sparky Channel, and I have a question for you. If you have a fitting right here, and a fitting right here, and the total distance from here to here is 70 inches, and you want to jump over with what we call a three-point saddle bend over this piece of three-inch ABS. So the ABS is about three and a half inches in diameter and we want to clear it by half an inch so we're going to jump over this four inches okay so total length 70 inches we want to do a three-point saddle bend jumping over this obstacle which is four inches i have a 72 inch piece of conduit here and the question is will do you think it'll make it can I use this piece of conduit or do I need to go get another 10 footer? <laughs> See, so, so let's figure it out. The best way to do this isn't to just try it and see what happens. The best way to do it is to do the math. We're going to be making a three point saddle bend that consists of a 22 and a half, a 45 and a 22 and a half degree bend. And here's an example of a three-point saddle bend right here. These bends up here are called four-point saddle bends, but this is what we're going to be doing, a three-point saddle bend. This one only had to come up three inches off of the board, and the one we're going to be doing today has to jump up four inches. So the numbers are going to be a little different, but it's the same 22 and a half, 45 degree, 22 and a half degree bend. Now the shrink is 3 16 of an inch per inch of height of the obstruction. So we got four inches here, we want to come up. And so it'll be 3 16 times four, which is 12 16 or three quarters of an inch. And how did I find that, you ask? Okay, you can look on a table and I will give you a link to a table in my video description for these kind of bands, the three-point saddle bands, 22, 45, 22. And it will tell you that the shrink is 3 16 of an inch per inch of height of obstruction. But I'm going to show you an easier way to do it. This is my client tape measure. And on the back of it, it gives you the conduit bending multiples. And for 22 and a half degrees, it is 3 16 of an inch. So notice that that's the same that we have right here, the 3 16 of an inch. So you really have your choice. You can stop your work and go look up a chart for a 22, 45, 22, and you'll find that the shrink is 3 16 of an inch. Or you can just, just know, either know that the the shrink is 3 16 for a 22 and a half degree bend or just look on your on your tape measure on the back of your tape measure and you can see that it's 3 16 of an inch so that's a nice time saving trick it's it's the shrinkage for this first bend right here 3 16 of an inch the three quarters of an inch will get you to right here that's what you need to make this bend you need to know the, sh the shrinkage I'm going to show you in a second when I make the pen. But to find out if you have enough conduit, to find out what the total length of conduit you need, you have to figure out this pen too. You've got to add this in. See, both these are going to have shrinkage. So this shrinkage for this pipe right here, this, this shrinkage, well, I'll point down here. This shrinkage, when you come up here, it's going to be three quarters of an inch, and this shrinkage on this side is going to be three quarters of an inch. So the total shrinkage for this conduit is going to be an inch and a half. And so we have a 70 inch run, and so we've got an inch and a half shrinkage. So you have to have 71 and a half inches of conduit to make this run. So we have plenty of conduit. We have a 72 inch piece of conduit and that's going to be just fine. So let's get to work. 
I've measured 71 and a half inches on my conduit. And I'm going to ream that out. Now we're going to get the measurement we need to make the first bend of the three point saddle bend. So I'm going to start right here and the conduit goes into this fitting about five eighths of an inch. So that's where I'm going to measure from. And you measure to right here in the middle of the obstacle. Not this side, not this side, the middle of the obstacle. And that's 36 inches. And then we have three quarters of an inch of shrink on this side. So here I've made three marks on my 71 and a half inch conduit. This is the middle mark right here. This is 36 and three quarters. So that's the distance to right here plus the shrink of three quarters of an inch. So that's our middle mark right here. And then if you come down here, it says outer marks two and a half inches per inch of height of obstruction. So the obstruction is four inches. So the outer marks need to be 10 inches on either side of this middle mark. So I have another mark right here at 26 and three quarters. And I have another mark right here at 46 and three quarters. So these all reflect uh, the shrink. We have to add the shrink, uh, 36 and three quarters in the middle and then 10 inches on either side. The bend on the center mark is going to be made on the notch. And it doesn't matter which way the hook of the bender is facing to make this. It's the notch is for the metal bend of a three point saddle bend. So this first bend on the middle mark on the notch is gonna to go to 45 degrees right here. So put your boot on the lower part of the handle to support the handle. Down to 45. Okay, then you take and twist it 180 degrees. The second bend goes on the arrow. This bend's going to 22 and a half degrees. This is right here. Right there. Okay, you switch it around. You put the third mark right on the arrow and line this up get it nice and straight and once again we're going to 22 and a half degrees which is right there it's a good idea to place your three-point saddle bend conduit on the ground and make sure it came out correctly all right, let's see how this came out. This should be interesting. Okay, I'll put this conduit in this fitting on this side. Okay, ooh, this is coming out very nicely right here. And wow, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. It came out exact. It came out right on the nose. This, this might be off just a little bit here, but that's pretty amazing. Have to move this down a little bit. To get it in. Woo wee! That's very nice. Okay, we'll tighten these down. Okay, our calculations came out amazingly well. Here's the three-point saddle bend. And you see my middle mark is pretty darn close to the middle mark on the pipe. Here's the 10 inches uh, to the left and here's the mark at 10 inches to the right 
and you can see I'll put this light on you can see uh, it's nice and level and then here's where it went into the fitting so those calculations were spot on my advice really is not to try and uh, make this calculation but to let this run long and make the mark on the pipe and cut it but it can be done this way uh, this kind of proved it so there you go that's a three-point saddle bend and uh, we calculated the shrinkage and it came out perfectly I'd like to go over why I used three quarters of an inch of shrinkage to find this first middle mark and why I got an inch and a half of shrinkage for this entire bend. The reason is that you just need to get this middle mark. All you got to do is calculate this angle. It's 22 and a half. The shrinkage is 3 16 you multiply that by the distance out here, which is four, from the wall to right here is four. So four times three sixteenths is 12 sixteenths, which equals three quarters. So that's all you need to make this mark. You just need to use the shrinkage of this angle right here. You don't need to use this out here to find this middle mark. But if you want to know the shrinkage of this whole area, you have to use this plus this. So that would be 3 16 type 2 is 6 16 times 4. It comes out to an inch and a half. So you have an inch and a half of shrinkage for this entire three-point saddle bend. Whereas you only have three quarters of an inch shrinkage to find your middle mark. Now there's another way to calculate uh, the entire shrinkage of this three-point saddle bend and that is to just use this 45 degree middle bend. Now you see right here shrink for 45 degrees equals 3 eighths of an inch per inch. So you can actually you don't have to calculate the shrinkage of these two bends to find your entire shrinkage you could just use 45 so you would use 3 eighths of an inch times 4 inches of height of obstruction so you would wind up with 12 eighths of an inch well, 4 times 3 eighths is 12 eighths that's an inch and a half comes out the same so to find the entire shrinkage of this bend, you can just utilize the 45 degree bend and get an inch and a half, or you can add up the shrinkage of these two uh, 22 and a half degree bends, which is an inch and a half. It comes out the same. So that's why the amount we use to get this middle mark is basically half of what we use to find the shrinkage of the entire band. The shrinkage for 10 degree offsets is 1 16th of an inch per inch of height of obstruction. The shrinkage for 22 degree offsets is 3 16 of an inch. The shrinkage for 30 degree offsets is a quarter of an inch. And the shrinkage for 45 degree offsets is 3 8 of an inch. So if you're running conduit and you know your shrinkage, then it might save you some money sometimes because if you know that a certain length will be sufficient, then you don't have to break out a brand new piece of conduit. I'll put a link in my video description for the new tool bags from Klein. This one has eight pockets and it'll move as much as 32 degrees. So it moves with you while you're working and it just comes right off. It's a modular system. And so there's uh, four different styles and they all just fit right onto this item right here and it just clicks into place. Also, I'll put a link for the Klein 9 inch lighted level, the Klein 25 foot magnetic tape measure that has the conduit bending tables on the back, and I'll put a link for the DeWalt 12 volt max impact driver 
the Milwaukee three and a quarter inch bandsaw and for ideal benders. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.